Greetings, Earthlings. Handheld condenser time. This is the Electro Voice RE4, I mean 520. I did buy this with my own money and it costs around $330. Like always, I'll throw some affiliate links in the description down below. While you'll down while you'll down there, you'll also find all of the recording settings in the doobly-doo as well as the description. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. You're going to get a zippered storage pouch. You'll, of course, get the microphone, a microphone clip, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, and a tiny bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, this thing feels absolutely fantastic. It has an all-metal body as well as a metal grill with absolutely no give to it. As we move around the outside, there are no buttons or switches. On the rear of the mic, you will find the XLR port. If you remove the grill, you will find that you do have a high-pass filter switch. And whether you care or not, this microphone is made in China. Is that better, commenter? As far as the specs, I am not going to read them to you, but I do have them all listed in the description, and I will also have the polar pattern and frequency response graph, as well as a few other specs up on screen, in case you want to pause and take a closer look. Now I am spinning around the RE520 to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear of the mic. It should have a lobe of sensitivity back here. Going around to the second 90 degree angle slowly, and there we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Next, I want to see how effective the microphone is at rejecting plosives, so please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now with my lips on the grill. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please stop making eye contact with me, Bandroof. <laughs> now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about three inches off of the mic with it pointed directly at my mouth, and here is how it's sounding. Now about one foot away from the RE520, about two feet away from the 520, and about four feet away from the Electro Voice RE520. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, now I am clickety-clacking on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds about three inches away from my mouth in a relatively well-treated room. And now here is how the microphone sounds about three inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated room. Now I want to see how effective the microphone and the provided mount are at rejecting shocks. So I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that noise it rejects. And then I will tap on the boom arm. I'm also incredibly annoying, so I am going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Because this is a handheld microphone, I will pass it back and forth between my hands to see how much of that noise it can reject. Although I don't recommend it, I do want to include a sample of cupping the mic. So here is how it sounds when the grill is not covered. When I wrap up the grill in my hand, here is how it sounds. Again, here is how it sounds without the grill being cupped. And when your hand encapsulates it, here is how it sounds. Not great. Again, I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect, and the high-pass filter is currently off, and here is how it sounds. Now I have switched on the high-pass filter, and I am still directly on top of the microphone with my lips touching the grill, and here is how it sounds. And again, here is how it sounds right on top of the microphone without the high-pass filter engaged. And here is a second sample with the high-pass filter engaged when I am directly on top of the mi I, my lips are touching. I'm not on top of the microphone. You know what I mean. 
Now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a bunch of other microphones that are available so you can hear the mic against the competition and determine if it's the right sound for you. Starting on the Electro Voice RE520, I am three inches off. My gain is set at three o'clock and here's how it sounds. Starting on an industry standard, this is the Shure SM58, which is a handheld dynamic versus a handheld condenser. I am three inches off. I left my gain at three o'clock. Check the lower third because I will have to boost this significantly more in post. And there you go. Industry standard versus a handheld condenser. Back on the Electro Voice RE520, nothing has changed. Here's your palette cleanser. Let's go to another mic. Now I am on the SE Electronics V7, another handheld dynamic, and the last dynamic in this comparison, three inches off, gain still set at three o'clock, check the lower third. This goes for about $100, and here is how this compares to the RE520. Back on the RE520 again, so you can hear how it sounds in between each sample. That's enough. Let's go to another one. Now I am on the Audio-Technica AT2010. This is a handheld condenser microphone. It costs around $120. I am three inches off. My gain is still set at three o'clock. And here is how it compares to the RE520. Let's do some more. Back on the EV RE20, and yes, it is a different day. This is another palate cleanser. Let's hear another microphone. Now I am on the Electro Voice ND76, which is a handheld dynamic microphone. I am three inches off. My gain is still set at three o'clock. Check the lower third. This thing goes for about $130. And here is how it compares to its bigger condenser brother. All right, here we are on the Electro Voice RE520 again, so you can hear the tone of this microphone. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Let's go to another mic. Next, I am on the Lewitt MTP350CM, another handheld condenser microphone. Three inches off, 48 volts on, gain still set at three o'clock. This goes for about $160, and here is how it sounds compared to the EV. Let's go back to it and do a lot more. Hey, this is the midpoint palette cleanser for you. Get a good feel for the microphone. Check the lower third and let's do some more. Now I am on the Rode M2, another handheld condenser microphone. Three inches off, gain still set at three o'clock and 48 volts still on. This goes for about $180. Very different sounding, but here is how it compares to the RE520. That's enough of that. Let's do some more. All right, we are over the hump and we are back on the RE520 again. That is enough of a sample. Let's go to another mic. Now you're listening to the new kids on or the new kid on the block. This is the Earthworks SR117. This just came out a couple of months ago. I am three inches off. My gain is still set at three o'clock. 48 volts on because this is a handheld condenser microphone. Slow down, Bandrew. This microphone costs about $200. And here is how it sounds compared to the Electro Voice. Let's do some more. Hello, don't you dare fall asleep on me. This is the RE520 again. Palette cleanser, palette cleanser. Let's go to another microphone. Now we are on the Shure Beta 87A. I am three inches off. My gain is still set at three o'clock and 48 volts is still on because this is a handheld condenser. This mic goes for about $260, and here is how it compares to the RE520. Which one do you like better? Let me know in the comments down below. Back on the RE520, we have a late entry into the comparison section, and this is a palate cleanser for that microphone. Let's go to that other microphone. Now I am on the Electro Voice RE20. This is a broadcast dynamic microphone. I am three inches off. Gain is still set at three o'clock. Check to see how much I boosted in the lower third. This microphone costs about $400, so $70 more than the 520. And I just had to include this comparison so you could hear how it sounds. There you go. We have two more to go, I think. Back on the 520, I understand that was annoying. I was trying to keep you awake. That's enough of the 520. Let's go to the super penultimate microphone. Next, I am on the Neumann. Hello, Neumann. 
KMS105, another handheld condenser microphone. I am three inches off. My gain is set at three o'clock. This goes for about $730, so $400 more than the RE520. But here is how it sounds compared to the 520. Which one do you prefer? Let's go back and do one final comparison. And we have one final microphone to go. You all know what it's going to be, but this is your RE520 palate cleanser. Now let us jump to the last comparison. And finally, I am on the Neumann. Hello, Neumann. U87AI, this is a multi-pattern studio condenser microphone, cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter, three inches off, gain decreased to about 11 o'clock. This goes for $3,700. Not a fair comparison. This is simply a control from video to video. There you go. That's a sample of the Neumann. Hello, Neumann, U87AI, against the RE520. Let us now jump to the music test. What if I told you I'm alien And I come from far away And all I need is fresh and tasty brains To feast up on tonight Let me eat your brains Clearly the human race is not using it, so please? Brains, I <laughs> I need them to feast upon. It's always embarrassing because the truth wants to come out and sometimes, pop, it comes right out. <laughs> Let's just go to the conclusion. This is ridiculous. As far as I can remember, this is the first condenser microphone that I'm reviewing from Electro Voice, and I have to say I'm pretty impressed by this thing. And first up, as far as pros, the microphone did a great job at handling noise and shock rejection. On a very similar note, the body is incredibly dead, so it doesn't have any kind of resonance when you're tapping on it or when you bump it. The high pass filter was also extremely effective without being overly aggressive. And I feel found the rejection in the untreated space to be pretty respectable. But then as far as cons, I found the plosive rejection on this thing to leave a bit to be desired. As far as the self noise, I think that 17 dBA is decent. It is better than the Neumann KMS 105, hello Neumann, which is 1 dBA higher. I would just like to see a slightly lower self noise. And the last con is not a con, it is an FYI. In case you plan to use this without the grill, you can't really do that because when the grill is removed, the microphone becomes ungrounded and has a lot of hum. Here's a sample of that. Just so you know, when you do remove the grill, the microphone becomes ungrounded or something. And now, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the Electro Voice RE520? As far as the overall sound, I kind of think it sounds like a slightly brighter RE20, and I know that's going to excite a lot of people. You're getting a bit of weight in the bass and low mids, then you're getting a relatively neutral midsection, and then you're getting a bit of clarity and a bit of a bump in the top end, but it's not overdone and it doesn't come across as sizzly or harsh, it is really well done with that boost in the upper frequencies. On the electric guitar, I think this works perfectly fine because the low end isn't overly muddy, the mids are nice and neutral, and then the top end doesn't come across sizzly or harsh. On the acoustic guitar though, I quite like this because the bass and mids are nice and balanced, and then that boost in the top end gives you some nice detail and some attack from the pick on the strings. Really liked it for that. 
For singing vocals, I think this thing sounds great, especially with the high pass filter on, because the low end isn't muddy, the mids are still nice and neutral, and then the top end has some nice clarity, but it doesn't come across as overdone or crispy or harsh. And finally, for spoken word, I thought this thing worked great. Like I mentioned, I think it sounds like a slightly brighter RE20. You're getting a bit of heft in the bass and low mids, a neutral mid section it's not overly congested it's also not scooped so it doesn't come across sounding hollow and then you get that nice boost in the top end which creates a nice clean and clear sound but it doesn't come across as harsh or artificial and to wrap up would i recommend the electro voice re520 yes i would it's undeniable that $300 is a lot of money, but as far as handheld condenser mics go, I think this thing delivers. I thought it sounded great on spoken word and singing, it sounded pretty good on the acoustic, and it was definitely usable on the electric. The handling noise rejection and shock rejection was great. The background noise and the untreated room rejection was also really impressive. The only real drawback for me is the plosives. So if you like the sound of this thing, if you have the budget for it, and you don't have any issues with plosives, then I think this is an awesome sounding option in the handheld condenser microphone marketplace. I need to get a graphic. Marketplace. All right, that's it. Bye. Boop.